Welcome to the Boise Library's Virtual School Age Fun Program. I'm Trisha, and I work at the library at Hola New Stick. Today I have a very fun program for you where we're going to be using some science, some art, lots of fun, and we are going to be doing a treasure hunt. Now this isn't going to be a normal treasure hunt. It's going to have a little bit of a surprise element to it. Now I am filming from my house and I have quite a few dogs. So if you hear any barking or click clacking, it's probably just my dogs wanting to join in on all the fun we're having. And that's okay. All right, so this program is gonna have three different parts to it. Part one is going to be making our surprise treasure ball objects. Part two is gonna be making our treasure map hiding our treasure balls and finding them. And then part three is going to be dissolving our treasure balls and finding the hidden surprise inside. I'm also gonna have someone special come on and tell you what exactly is happening and explain the science to it. So this program is gonna be really fun if we have more than just one person doing it. So maybe you can ask whoever is in your house to play along with you. Find a brother or sister, mom or dad, maybe a grandma or grandpa, or someone else to play along. You guys can each go around and try finding little trinkets of treasure you want to hide. So whenever you find your treasure, you're just gonna wanna make sure it's smallish enough. So do a palm test, put it in your palm, see if it fits. I have a little green elephant Elephants are my favorite animals, so this one was pretty easy to find. I also found a little piece to a game, has a bug on it. Found a little cat who's laying down. And then I found the big surprise is an elephant ring. So for part one, we are gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need a bowl. I have a clear bowl. You do not have to have a clear bowl. I just wanted you to be able to see what was happening. You also need some water, some baking soda, food coloring. Now this is optional. If you don't have any food coloring, that's okay. Your treasure balls are just gonna be white. And that's totally fine. You'll also need a little stirring utensil and a cookie sheet. Now, if you have a grate of some kind to help raise up our treasure balls, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. With the treasure balls, they're gonna need some time to dry. So I recommend letting them dry overnight. So plan ahead, find a day that you wanna do this on. Maybe it's this coming Saturday. And Friday night, find your treasure make the treasure balls and make your treasure map. And then Saturday, you can go around hiding your treasure balls and marking X marks the spot on your treasure map. And then you can find them and dissolve them. For part two, when we make our treasure maps, we're gonna need some paper and a marker, pencil, crayon, anything works. And then for part three, when we actually dissolve and find our treasure, you're gonna need another bowl again and some vinegar. All right, so let's get started. All right, so we are ready to make our treasure balls. We've looked around our house and we found some pieces of treasure and now we're ready. So the first part is we are going to mix in the color, the food coloring with our water. So if you don't have food coloring, that's okay. If you do, this is a little bit more of a science and art experiment. Most food colorings come with four different colors. We have yellow, green, red, and blue. And these four colors are great, but you can also mix them around. So what color do you think we would have if we mixed red and blue together? would make purple, which would be a fun color. What if you mixed 
red and yellow together it would be orange. You guys know what other kind of colors you can make by mixing two or three colors together? Try some experiments and test it out. Today, I'm gonna to make some teal colored balls. So I'm gonna use blue and put a couple drops of blue in there. I'm gonna mix some green in it. A couple drops of green. Now when you're using food coloring, your hands are gonna get pretty dirty. And in fact, with this entire program, if you've ever been to any of my programs at the main library, you know I really like getting messy. If you do not enjoy the messiness aspect of any of these programs, maybe you can find some rubber gloves or some kitchen gloves and put those on to kind of help protect your hand. If you get food coloring on your hand, a great way to wash that off with is with um, shaving cream. So you can put some shaving cream on your hand and then wash and it should help a little bit. It won't completely get rid of the food coloring on your hand, but it will enough. All right, so now that we have our color mixed, we are going to pour in some baking soda into the cup or the bowl and start with a little bit at first. We can always make more. You're also gonna wanna take off any watches or rings that you're wearing. Once we have this, we are then gonna pour very carefully just a little bit of water in. It's also helpful to have a towel of some sort. And then here's the fun part. If we just dive right in, get our hands in, get messy, and really mush it around. So what we are looking for here is to have a mixture that is not too wet or too dry. We want it to be able to form a ball and stay a ball. So mine is pretty crumbly still. I'm actually gonna add a bit more baking soda and some more water to make a little bit more. Make sure you're doing this on a surface that you can spill something on. If you have someone to help you, maybe they can pour the baking soda and the water in and then you can use both hands to really mush up this mixture. All right, so mine is pretty good. As you can see, if I form a ball, it kind of stays a ball. If yours is too wet, add some more baking soda. If it's too dry, add some more water. We don't have any exact measurements because we're just testing it out and planning. So once we have our mixture, we're going to take a handful. We're going to put it in the palm of our hand and kind of smush it out. Then we're going to take a treasure. We're going to put it in the middle of that ball and then we're going to take some more mush and mush it around, hiding our treasure inside. Until it's a nice ball. Make sure all the treasure is hidden. And then we're going to just set it on the cookie sheet to dry overnight. Let's go ahead and make another one. We're take our cat, set him in, and then just cover him up. I think my dog is ready for dinner. Or second breakfast, I guess. So we form our ball, you can be as big as you want. Oops. So my dough is a little too wet and it's not really staying formed. 
That's okay. It does not have to be perfect. Just needs to be our best. Just means that it's going to take a little longer to dry. Now, if you don't have a grate to set these on and you're just sitting on a cookie sheet, there's a second ball. In the morning, you're going to want to come out and flip the ball around. All right, so I'm going to keep forming my balls and then I'm going to wash my hands and we can move on to part two of this program. All right, hands are clean. I wash with warm water and soap for 20 seconds. It's always important to wash our hands multiple times throughout the day to stay healthy and clean. And we are ready to move on to part two. So this part, while our ball treasure balls are drying, we are gonna make our treasure maps. So you need some paper, a marker, or a pencil. And now these maps can be as complicated and specific as possible, or they can be on the other end and be as non-descriptive as possible. I'm gonna show you a couple different variations. Here's the really fun part about this. I am not an artist. I have no idea what the dimensions of my house are. So the less descriptive it is, that just means it's gonna be harder for somebody to find the treasure. It's a pretty nice win-win, right? If you are an artist and you want things to be very exact, that works too. So as you can see, on one of these maps, I have out some different dimensions and walls in our house, and I have one area labeled garage. We also have some doorways in there, some hallways. From this, you can kind of see where the front door is, and you can get your layout of the house pretty easily. Another option is to make it a little bit differently where we have still some walls, but most of the rooms are kind of boxed out. And we have a lot of labels on our diagram or our map. With this, if some, oh, it's upside down. With this, if somebody hands you this map, it's pretty easy to tell where you are within the map. If you wanna make it really challenging and really easy on yourself for drawing the map, you can just draw circles. You guys kind of see how these two maps overlap. Oh, always upside down. So here we have our game room in the back. We have a nice big circle for our game room. But if someone were to hand me this and say, this is your treasure map. Go find the treasure where all the X's are, I would first have to figure out what it's a map of. Is it outside? Is it my house? I have no idea. And then I'd have to figure out where I'm at in the map to figure out where those X's might be. So if you have no artistic ability or you're getting really frustrated at trying to figure out the dimensions of your house, that's okay. We can go simple and just say that we are making a really, really hard treasure map. Okay, next we are going to wait for our treasure balls to dry overnight, flipping them up over in the morning, and then we are gonna come back and see what happens after we dissolve our treasure balls. All right, now it is time for part three of our program. So, so far, we have learned how to make our fun treasure balls, and we have made our various forms of the treasure map. It's now time for the fun part. When we make the treasure balls, we need to make them a day before we actually do our program or our treasure hunt. Once everybody has found all the treasure balls, we now have to dissolve them to see what kind of treasure are inside each ball. So here you can see are the dried up treasure balls. Now these treasure balls, while they're dry, they are still a little fragile. So be careful, don't squeeze too hard on them. 
Um, and you can see that teal color turned out quite nicely, I think. All right, so to dissolve them, we're gonna use some scientific principles. We need, as I said before, some vinegar, and we need our bowl. You can use the same bowl that we use to mix up the treasure balls in. I'm gonna use a clear bowl so that we can actually see what it looks like. So, we are going to pour in some vinegar. Then we are going to just drop our treasure ball into the vinegar and see what happens. If you have any eyedroppers at home, it's really fun to put the vinegar, the treasure balls on a shallow bowl or plate and use the eyedroppers and just drop the vinegar onto the treasure balls. It kind of extends out the anticipation and the waiting. I'm pretty impatient. So we are just gonna drop the treasure ball into the bowl. All right, we're gonna use, let's go for the big one. I'm gonna drop it in. You can see it's fizzing. Lesson learned. We need to use a much thicker, deeper bowl or less vinegar because it does fizz up quite a lot. Also handy to have is a towel we will use to clean up. Now, I'm not sure if you can hear. This also sounds really fizzy. We're gonna roll this ball over, swish it around in the vinegar. At this point, have one of the treasures. It's our green elephant. He came out to play. Now, this vinegar is kind of mucky with all of the extra treasure ball pieces, formerly called mush. Uh, so we are gonna dump this out. We're gonna start again with a fresh bowl of vinegar. All right, so now we are back with our fresh bowl, and we are gonna try it again. So, we're gonna get our vinegar, we're gonna pour it into the bowl. And then we are going to take our next treasure ball. We're gonna drop it in the vinegar and see what happens. It's gonna fizz up. Oh, got almost to the top. Means we poured in just the right amount. Make sure when you're doing this that you do it on a surface that can get wet. However, we are just using baking soda and vinegar, which is a great cleaning solution. So maybe if you spill some, you can just tell mom or dad or the adult around we're just trying to help out and clean the kitchen. All right, so it's almost done. I'm gonna keep going. And we have our little cat. All right, now I'm gonna have a special guest come on and explain what exactly we just saw. Hello, my name is Mr. Jason and I'm from the Collister Library. And I'm here to explain the science of why Trisha's vinegar and baking soda just foamed up and spilled everywhere. Now, vinegar is an acid and baking soda is a base. And when the two combine, they form water and carbon dioxide. And that's what was making that big mess that you just saw. Now, I have some chemical formulas here to explain the process. You don't have to understand what these formulas mean but I will use them to demonstrate how the change occurred. Now this top formula we have is vinegar. 
and this bottom formula is baking soda. When these two mix together, they change and become something else. This hydrogen right here at the end will switch places with this sodium. The sodium comes up here and attaches itself and makes a new chemical. And the hydrogen will come down here and we are just going to go ahead and replace both of those with a little two. And that means there are two H's. Now, neither of these were water or carbon dioxide that I just explained, but what we do have right here is called carbonic acid. This carbonic acid won't stick around long in normal conditions, and it wants to separate into H2O, and if you recognize what that is, that's water, and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a gas, and when it comes out of the water, it's going to show up in the form of all those bubbles and fizz that you just saw. If you're interested in chemistry, talk to your parents or your teachers to learn more about this process. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the video. So there you go. It's science. If you try this activity at home and want to take some pictures and ask mom or dad to post them on social media, please tag the Boise Public Library so that I can see all the fun you're having and enjoy it with you virtually. And then remember to check back at the library's website on Monday at 4 o'clock for a very special Star Wars school age program for May the 4th. Have a great weekend and have fun becoming scientists.